All right. Let's see how many people. We got seven people here. Let's wait like two more minutes uh, before we get started. Christian is here. Looks like he, there's some network uh, issues. Um, yeah, let's wait like two more minutes before we get started. And if you notice, I have a HackMD uh, link in the discussion. And so that's um, an attempt to create sort of a linear document of an agenda. And that I think will um, be helpful for folks uh, to, to have that on hand. Could, could we add in um, attendees to that as well? If you want, absolutely. All right, so that would be good. That's really all I have been tracking in, in actual notes for each, of, each event. And Hi, everybody. Hey. Hello. Sorry, I haven't been, I, I couldn't make it the last uh, couple of uh, times, but um, and I, now I finally got my OKD t-shirt, so. And I nice. haven't gotten one yet. It still oh, hasn't really? come to what? Canada. It got to Germany and it hasn't come to Canada. Damn, I'm going to arrive today, actually. Yeah, mine got here earlier this week. I also got mine. Fits perfectly. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's awesome. And we will get more of these. So if someone's coming on and they didn't get one, um, don't worry. We'll we'll put them in the uh, in a work a, a LinkedIn store that you can um, a linkable store where you can self service and get them. So there you go. Cool. Someday we'll have a meeting where everybody has an OKD T-shirt on. All right, well, looks like we've got enough folks here to at least uh, uh, get uh, rolling here. So uh, again, there's a link in the uh, channel, uh, post it again for anyone new that joined. Um, please put your um, attendance uh, at the very top of that uh, and note uh, who uh, or what you uh, represent. Um, and you don't have to represent anyone, you might represent yourself. So uh, let's get started with some quick introductions. Uh, I'm Jamie McGarra and a member of the working group for a little over a year now, maybe a year and a half. And um, using OKD in University of Michigan, various environments in the University of Michigan, um, we'll be spinning up probably later today, um, a cluster that's gonna be used for a couple dozen developers uh, doing data um, heavy applications in the political and social sciences. And uh, anyone else want to introduce themselves? Diane, maybe? We'll go next to Diane. Sure. I'll go next. I'm Diane Mueller, the Director of uh, Community Development over at Red Hat in the Cloud Platform BU, and um, one of the instigators and chairs of this working group, uh, along with everybody. So. I haven't been here in, in a bit, so I'm on edge. I'm Christian Glombeck and I am an engineer um, in the OpenShift arc in, within Red Hat and I've also been one of the co-chairs of the OPD. Timothy, you want to introduce yourself? Hey, so I'm Timothy Arvi and I work at, um, at Red Hat on the Fedora Chorus, well, Chorus team, which among other things work a lot of, uh, does a lot of the work for Fedora Chorus. Bruce, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. You know, I was just trying to sign or put my name in the document uh, unsuccessfully, even though I logged in. But uh, I, I'm uh, Bruce Link, uh, and I'm just a OKD user. I teach at BCIT and uh, uh, managed to put several students through the OKD experience, uh, successfully doing projects and things like that. So that's been a lot of fun. Joseph. Yeah, I'm Joseph Meyer from Germany. I'm working for Rodi and Schwarz as a cloud architect, and I'm an OKD user and supporter since uh, yeah more than three years now. And the man who needs no introduction, Vadim. Um, I'm Vadim Blugowski, and my uh, webcam is apparently broken. Um, I work for Red Hat, um, focusing on upgrades and release activities for OKD. Excellent. Neil, you want to introduce yourself? 
Yeah, hey, uh, my name is Neil Gampa. I, I work as, uh, at Datto as a senior DevOps engineer focusing on software delivery systems, including source code, package management, container stuff, and things like that. And, you know, I'm here in the OKD working group working as both a person in Fedora and to a lesser extent a person from Datto to do awesome things with uh, OKD4. Excellent. Uh, anyone else want to chime in that we didn't get yet? Tree, you want to say hi? Sure, I, I can say hi. Yep. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Sri Ramanajam. I work with Neil at uh, at Datto as a senior software engineer, uh, working on various products and services that are you know built on top of our in-house uh, Kubernetes and OpenShift clusters. So. And I'm also here as an interested hobbyist, uh, especially in like the home lab space. I'm looking to expand OKD's presence there and to sort of bring up its cachet in that community. So yeah. And Shree is a master of disaster recovery, I'm led to believe. <laughs> Did you get it back up yet or no? No, I, the cert thing that uh, that, uh, that other person mentioned, I don't know his name of right now, it, uh, it didn't work for me, so I just blew it away earlier this morning. Or respin it probably afterwards. Did it actually? Oh, you haven't respun it yet. I was I was wondering if you'd actually yeah. brought it back online after everything fell apart. No, not yet. After work probably. All right. All right. Well, let's um, jump into the agenda items. I do like to have the intros because there's always going to be people listening or watching that aren't familiar with who we are and what we're about. And again, um, OKD is the uh, communities. Um, Kubernetes, uh, community supported uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, technology that um, uh, is uh, supported by a very um, interesting and lively group of individuals from a diverse, uh, with diverse backgrounds. And it's a real fun project to be involved with. So let's get into release updates with Vadim. Um, sure. So uh, we didn't release 4.8 release candidate this week because the code freeze is planned to be happening this week or the next week. Once it happens, we'll release uh, a new release candidate, but it shouldn't have changes, just a bunch of uh, bug fixes. So if you could give the Nokia 4 8 a try, that would be very appreciated. Uh, meanwhile, on 4.7, we released a new stable release. It, the main highlights of it is that uh, Machine OS moves to Fedora 34, and we might have um, an upgrade issue number 668 um, affecting for 7 to, um, to the latest stable upgrade. I'm still looking into that. It seems like we missed including one package, and uh, the most concerning part is that it was not caught by CI. Um, we'll do um, our best to fix it quickly, see if the workaround is feasible. If it's not, we'll move to a new way of building machine OS content for a, a release, a uh, patch release soon. The, the issue is that also we're seeing quite a lot of um, Stable clusters upgraded to the latest version, uh, something about 16 telemetry. Um, so we'll need to figure out more information about this issue. So if you could give uh, an upgrade a try on your test environment and reply to this bug, that would be very appreciated. Um, I think that's all we have from the technical standpoint. Okay, great. And um, we always like to bring our, our um, friends um, from Fedora Core OS on to give an update on that. So, Timothy, Timothy you want to uh, give us an update? Sure. So, right now we have two items on the agenda. The first one is about systemd, OOD, which is uh, a new part, of, a new daemon, I think, from systemd that has been introduced in Fedora 34, if I'm correct. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, and that is not yet enabled in Fedora Core S by default. 
and we're looking at whether it makes sense for container workloads to have that part of the system. Uh, so to give a short overview, I think uh, the system DOMD essentially is is a is a demon that is using the new C groups B2 and PSI interfaces from the kernel to figure out which process it should kill in the case uh, where the, the kernel well the system lacks uh, memory uh, is under pressure, memory pressure and uh, so essentially on LKD uh, well this might have at best consequences maybe we don't. Well, we we don't actually know if it, what what would be the consequences of using that that in LKD. Uh, so yeah, the idea is to bring that out to your attention and uh, trying to figure out if we should enable that. If we should enable that by default, of course, it could be enabled in Fedora OS but disabled in LKD too. So, but well, if if it doesn't generally make sense for container workloads, then we just probably won't enable it at all. Uh, and uh, well, this is like the right time to gather feedback if you have any on this issue. Yeah. Um, that feature seems to be very useful, but now it won't affect us because it requires the group to do. We don't have, and it's not clear if it would be default in four nine even. Um, another problem is that it's probably undesirable in Kubernetes world because the Kubelet cannot read systemd events to find out if your pod has OM that reads kernel events. If the system OMD would kill a process, it would look as if some random restart to Kubernetes it would just confuse all things. Um, Again, we would need to work upstream in, in Kubernetes to, to reconcile these two approaches until we can enable this by default. Um, so what we can do now is uh, to, to stop depending on, on Fedora Core's decision on this really and just disable it in our custom payload. Um, but that's probably the input from the OKD on this. All right. Well, that's that's great. I'll, I'll pass that forward to the director of teams. Um, James, right, and sorry. So in the chat, James is asking um, teach KAS to talk to OMD or vice versa. So th there is a when you Google this uh, Kubelet OOMD. Uh, there's a talk coming up by a Red Hat employee that is mostly about C groups B2 and Kubernetes. Um, so maybe th this is Giuseppe Scrivano, and um, so maybe we should uh, just be getting his opinion on this because he probably knows a lot more than we do about this whole complex. Okay, does someone want to reach out and? Uh and gather some information from that person, or at least maybe invite them to um, come here and, and talk with us? Um, I'll, I'll reach out and, and ask whether he wants to join next next time. Otherwise, uh, I'll, I'll just ask him to uh, give, give me a few words about it. Sure. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. All right, Timothy, what's next? Yes, the thing that I think is uh, a little bit more like forward thinking thing uh, because it's about Fedora 35. So we've just rebased Fedora 34. So it's not coming right away, uh, but it's uh, coming in approximately six months. And it's the right time, I would say, to take a look at what's uh, going to change in Fedora 35 and see how it might impact OKD and Fedora, Fedora OS and OKD. Yeah, uh, uh, so the yeah we essentially reviewing the changes that are going to be in Fedora 35 and so far we haven't identified anything pressing I would say or that would be uh, strong. Hold on one second. Could very loud. Type and mute typing. Yourself, please? I'm just going to mute other people and, and unmute okay. yourself. Um, if you need to. All right, so, uh, click typewriter. Okay, go ahead, Timothy. Yeah, 
So, all right, so Fedora 35 centuries, mostly nothing stands out so far, uh, but we're tracking that. And uh, the Fedora change process um, window is not closed yet, if I'm correct. So, uh, so yeah, this is, uh, this is ongoing. And that's mostly it for me for Fedora Cores. Uh, if there are any questions. Any questions? Did I understand that uh, right, that Fedora, uh... Of course, uh, uh, 34 is coming in half a year, but is used now in OKD? Uh, no, no. We've, uh, so as Vadim said, uh, Fedora Core is based on Fedora 34 is coming right now in OKD, just right now. Fedora 34 has been released a couple of weeks. Uh, oh, okay. Approximately a month before. Okay, thank you. And, um, and uh, so yeah, we we finally finished all the rebase for Fedora Cores, and uh, right now we're we're starting to look at Fedora 35, which is coming in approximately six months. Mm, okay, uh, thank you. To, to make sure that we catch up things before they happen, before we, that we can provide feedbacks for mm -hmm. everything is in fixed. Excellent. Right. From the looks of the changes, it doesn't look anything would break us, but. I think there was a good practice which we applied for for age release. We, uh, our machine OS content has been using Fedora's next develop stream to fetch the latest changes, which would only land and stable in a couple of weeks, so we can catch them. And the installer for for age is also currently using testing. Uh, requires rather recommends you to use test. Thing, I the initial Fedora OS images, so that we would change check that both of those are perfectly valid once they uh, land and stable. I think we'll we'll do the same for Rocket for nine or for ten until it becomes stable, um, so that we could verify the changes ahead. Um, that has been pretty valuable as we caught quite a few regressions were able to report them before it lands in for seven or in for the cross stable. Anything else? All right, let's move on now to uh, issues. Let's uh, take a look at our uh, issues. And one of those is um, that I wanted to highlight actually before we get into sort of the general overview of issues is the operator wish list. So this came up in conversation um, in an email thread. Um, Vadim, do you want to summarize the, the email that, that was sent to the group and sort of um, explain your response to that and, and maybe also Christian's response to that? Uh, about the Operator uh, wish list or yeah, which the, email? the email that we received um, basically asking for for clarity and for a documents change um, in regards to what was actually available and what was supported and whatnot, and there was actually a, a OKD document change uh, because of it. Right, that's because, for instance, we had to rip out some parts of the documentation because there's a logging operator is not directly available in OKD. And while we are waiting for folks to create a new OKD um, uh, catalog for the operators and start pushing the upstream versions of that, we would have to remove some parts of the documentation. Um, I don't think we have any estimate on this yet, but we'll be, it's because effectively out of our hands what we uh, what we need is the collaboration between various teams to commit to supporting those in Nogiri, as in supporting by community, nevertheless, not Red Hat support, but nevertheless, it's still some level of commitment required. And once it happens, we would be able to bring those parts of the documentation back. Um, but until then, we effectively have to remove them and tell folks that they unfortunately have to build those operators um, manually or look for alternatives and community uh, catalog we have. And that's basically, uh, that's the current state. 
can I, uh, Vadim? Oh. Could I, um, or if, like a few, probably months by now back, um, we talked about having an OKD specific catalog uh, just for OKD. Has there been, my question is, has there been any uh, development on, on that side? I haven't, I haven't heard any. It's mostly uh, the talks between the teams. They want to ensure that we don't plan additional work on them, but still this catalog gives them benefit of, uh, well, community support. Um, it appears that technical part of this should be trivial. It's just a matter of uh, ensuring that the teams actually commit to supporting those uh, versions of the operators before they land in official Red Hat operators or to push or uh, they want to develop an entirely different community version. It's just a matter of how they would structure their work. Uh, so creating a, a catalog itself is fairly trivial. It's just a matter of uh, making teams uh, commit to that. I, I wonder whether we should be setting up or just helping the people that would do that uh, set up this catalog so we have something um, the respective teams could then release to not worrying about, uh, you know, this catalog, it doesn't even exist yet. Um, and also I think, well, well, this is probably uh, more internal, uh, the management has now um, given a more clear, I think, mandate to the teams uh, to release to the community catalog or to release a community version of their uh, operator. Um, so maybe if we, if we kind of make it as easy as possible for them um, to actually release the operator, that will help out with that process. One thing that I was thinking about is, and we talked about this at the time, and I, I put a link um, in the chat to the particular issue that Christian created. We've got the wish list, but we don't actually have an explanation of what needs to happen. Um, we've got them categorized, currently unavailable, available in community, et cetera. Is it possible to maybe put a little explanatory text in that issue um, as a comment, or we create a separate page that's like, hey, this is actually what needs to happen for these various components to come together so people can understand what needs to happen, and then also we can look at timelines. And also for the people who in this group or who are interested in OKD development, for them to get started on this, maybe some tips so to provide them some some guidance as to hey, you know, if someone's like I would really like to see this operator in OKD, well, it needs to be rebuilt. Here's some general place to look about how to do that, or something like like each each repository for each repository for each operator is going to have specifics, but it might be nice if we inspired people who are interested in OKD to to take this on by giving them a little lift. Yeah, well, probably we should regroup them into two major groups as an additional order of attacks, like maintained by Red Hat and uh, something like others. The problem is that why we can submit logging operator, for instance, into the community operator, because is that OCP users would see them duplicated. They would see official Red Hat's logging operator and one coming from community and they would be very confused by which one is actually being supported. Um, I think that, that was the main reason and Jinx operator. have the OKD catalog, right? Yeah, so exactly. Have, exactly. Yeah. But uh, there is an Nginx operator which is totally fine to submit to upstream uh, operators and community can start working on this right now. And it's already listed in the wish list. So what we need to do is to review the list, um, find a list of things folks can start to, uh, submitting right now, like Nginx and I think NVIDIA operator, or, or maybe I'm wrong. Uh, and after careful review, we can start uh, we can find the documentation on how to submit, who wants to take care of it, how to uh, share the responsibility. Should we include these kind of a new wish list items into these meetings or who would maintain them and so on and so forth. Uh, the other internal Red Hat operators, they would need a bit more 
work because there is a whole team behind each of those and we need uh, their support and they would be maintaining it without OKD's work group um, kind of uh, requirements and such. Okay, well, let's put this on the agenda for the next meeting and in between now and then, if folks could think about how we could organize this um, and should it be a subgroup, you know, like a subcommittee or something like that? Should it be the main group and we talk about it in the main meeting, but how we can move forward on this because it's been lingering like Christian, I think, published this in, in January, like so we have a list that we can start working on. We can we could be adding stuff to it as well. Um, if we start moving on it, I think it makes um, OKD more attractive to have, because some of the ones in there are pretty significant, right? And there, it's things that people are really looking for, so. Right, so I think one comments? thing that... Oh, go ahead, Christian. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, so one, one thing I think that uh, the community can definitely already get started on is um, looking at the currently unavailable operators and all of those which aren't in the OpenShift uh, uh, organization or even the OpenShift K-native organization, so all non-Red Hat operators, um, those won't be released by, by us uh, anyways. So, and, and those would be going into the upstream catalog, I guess, um, or if they're, uh, if they're really made just for OpenShift, then they would go into the community catalog. Um, but any of those, all of those operators that aren't owned by Red Hat that are currently are unavailable, um, those would definitely be good candidates for the community to look, to look at them um, and add them to the respective catalog on the operator hub. There's also, there, there have been some changes uh, recently to the operator hub, so people can um, kind of more, uh, yeah, release uh, new versions uh, by themselves without uh, having an admin from the operator hub repository um, have to, uh, acknowledge those changes um, so that there's going to be, I think, owner files for each operator. So when you submit an operator, you'll become the owner of it, and then you can also update it without anybody else um, kind of having to acknowledge that from a third, third party. So maybe if, if there's interest within the community to get an op one of those operators released right now, um, all the non ratted operators would definitely be good candidates for you to look at. For us internally, all the operators that haven't been released yet, we obviously want to get them released to OKD for OKD by the respective teams. Um, yeah, maybe we can also think some folks in. Excellent. All right, so we'll put that on the agenda for, for um, our meeting in two weeks uh, and talk about this more and, and have fleshed it out a little bit more and probably put in a separate page as opposed to this issue actually maybe put an, an OKD page either on the website or something like that that's a, that we can actually edit in line um, as opposed to just adding comments to, et cetera, that, that we can improve upon and, and update the lists and, and whatnot. All right, moving on, are there, um, there's a, um, a new issue that was submitted. Um, Vadim, do you wanna talk about this a little bit? Uh, deploy your installer provision clusters on bare metal. Looks like it was submitted an hour ago. Is this the um, documentation one? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I was gonna talk to that just quickly. Um, we just spent uh, the prior hour to this meeting with Bruce and Mustafa. Um, Mustafa from Elderberry from Red Hat and Bruce from BCIT. And this is, uh, I'm just bringing it up here to give sort of an example of, um, of how we're working through um, the docs.okd.io to find um, defects in the documentation and report them back. And um, so we've, we've done our first pair, pair, not programming, but pair review. Um, and we're trying to document the process. And there is a recording that I'll, well, I'll put up as soon as I figure out what the YouTube issues. Um, but this example, and I'm just going to share my screen, I'm just going to grab one of them here and I'm just going to share the troubleshooting one, um, is the process, if you find a defect or an issue in the documentation that we're, we're using right now, um, and we'll, we, I will document it um, in a, a, a brief blog post on the OKD website um, and as well, so 
basically just finding this section and we're reviewing it with uh, Michael Burke, who's I don't think on this call, um, but in the documentation team for OpenShift. Um, and so this isn't about actually fixing the issue. So um, in some examples, there are code examples that need to be reviewed and retested, but this is a good way of um, make sure you put the bracket OKD in the, the subject line, put the link to the section that the issue you're finding in, and then potential um, resolutions. And if you don't have privileges, like most of us don't, to assign this to somebody, um, that slash assign at the bottom of my screen there for Michael Burke and myself um, will let, allow us to track it. And um, at the moment, I don't have privileges to add a label to it. Um, so I'm going to work on that. I'm going to double check with Michael. He may have um, privileges. But there are two labels that we're using. Um, one is OKD-only okay and the other one is um, that it's documentation. So there's another label in there. Um, for that. So uh, what, once we figure out, I don't think you can assign, like you can do the assign a person to um, that. I don't think there's a slash label function in GitHub um, to do it um, without privileges. So this is, we're going to start working through as many of the issues. I think, Bruce, we found like there's 20 references to our cause in the OKD documentation. And so we're going to use that to flush out all the issues and um, then move towards doing that. So what the ask is for this group is if you find something, especially right now we're focusing on the docs.okd.io, if you could use this approach um, to tagging them and keep an eye out for them, and we will do this um, and try and work with the docs team to make sure that with each release, there's a process in place for these things, these patches to be applied correctly. I'll stop sharing if anyone has any questions, um, but that's that's what that issue is. So you'll see a bunch of them pop up on the issues list, um, and right now they aren't properly labeled, and that's that's my issue to figure out this week. How many issues? All right. Oh. And is that the the OKD repository? Because I seem to be able to uh, edit labels on okay. that repo. You have more. Um, so maybe it, you have more privilege. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know why, why that docs repo, right? Yeah, I, I don't. Um, I can add stuff, but I can't edit that. So um, I'll figure it out, and maybe in the interim, if you can take those ones and just add OKD only label and the documentation label to all of them, that would be helpful. But um, Mustafa is going to keep motoring through and working with Bruce. And um, if other people want to get paired up with someone. Um, Mustafa, if you recall, is one of the newbies to the, OK, the Red Hat um, OpenShift team. And what we're trying to do is pair people, the newbies, up with external folks who have used and deployed OKD so that there's some um, life experience, or lived experience um, going through this. And then once we figure out this process and get a few of them through there, um, what I want to do is set up a, a hack the docs. See? You, you don't have privileges either, see? Uh, hmm, it's not just me. Uh, Christian does can't add them. Um, so uh, what I'd like to do is sometime this summer when everybody's um, feeling fine is to do a Hack the Docs Day and hopefully we'll catch everything in the docs.okd.io and then move to like the guides that, that everybody's created and the actual readme files and take on each of those using the Hopin platform. Because that's what I want to do on my summer vacation. Excellent. All right. I put a little note there um, mentioning that uh, Diane is going to organize the Hack the Docs Day. Um, so we can look forward to that. Um, the next thing I want to move to is, um, Vadim, if you could give a quick couple sentence explanation of the um, good first issues label and what that means and, and what your hope is? Uh, right. So we've been looking for easy bugs for community to get started for quite a long time. And when we wrote uh, a log bundle issue, I've noticed that 
things are missing there. For instance, we're using additional uh, services to update from Fedora Core OS to OKD specific um, to OKD specific uh, payload. Uh, normally, those are not a problem, but when things break, we would like to get logs from them as well. So uh, a few issues to fix that have been tagged and these are mostly touching the installer and our fork of it. So it would be very useful for a community to get started with building their own installer uh, that would effectively spin up a new guide how to build your own OKD installer until it merges in uh, upstream. And we would add some more services to collect uh, using uh, log bundle and uh, whoever picks up this item to verify, meaning break their cluster, collect log bundle, and ensure that all the logs are in place. Uh, so these kind of a small things would help us write better guides and explain how all things are interacting with each other. Uh, hopefully this would affect the troubleshooting, the bootstrap, and log bundle analysis, documentation, and so on and so forth. Um, I think that would be a great um, starting point for folks to understand the complexity of, of how we build the system and uh, how we analyze the problems, meaning log bundles and, and map getters are essential for us to collect all the information we need to, to find out all the details about the bug. This might be something that the group could take on as a regular section of our meeting or a subgroup could meet to basically like go through these and sort of bootstrap each other into, you know, because a lot of these involve little bits of knowledge that maybe one person has a little bit here, one person has a little bit there. Um, and maybe someone needs a jump start just to, to be able to dig a little deeper and help out. So it, it might be worth us thinking about how we could as a group sort of approach these um, and share a little bit of information to get people um, bootstrapped into being able to help uh, as, as sort of group developers or group support people or whatever. And this sort of runs into that concept of, we talked about at the last meeting of, of having basically people who, have, who commit themselves to being supporters, basically like supporting um, uh, you know, questions and whatnot and that, that specifically make themselves available. Um, or, or say that they will specifically be active, right, to, to do that. So any thoughts about what yeah, we, perhaps we could perhaps we could suggest, perhaps we could, suggest uh, we could have an open floor-ish uh, style of suggest your, your own favorite paper cut or an issue so that we could file it. I could help with, if it touches some um, OCP part, that could help with filing a proper bugzilla ticket and driving it to the team so that we could see how it gets fixed in master or release uh, for eight, then gets here it picks two for seven and explain how uh, how soon do we get it and how to uh, how to interact with other teams. Probably that should help us fix a bunch of things which are left behind, but very, very easy to, to fix, actually. Okay. I would also suggest that what we're doing with the docs, the pair programming or pair reviewing um, uh, process might be a good way to flush out the workflow around these, um, what we need. Um, the, and they may all be different because they may be, you know, something may be a Fedora Core OS, but I think if we do, if we have those tagged now, um, we could use the same team of group of folks that Mustafa is coming from, the newbie um, Red Hatters, to um, pair them with external resources who are willing to help mentor them to do some of these first first paper cuts. Um, maybe motor through it that way to get the process flushed out. Then I'd be happy to do facilitate that. So do we have a bunch of first cuts listed? Or first, I, I'm calling them paper cuts, but because you refer to them that, but as... Have a label there yeah, there's a label. There's like five of them right now. Yeah, four or five of them, so... Maybe what the thing is, is to reach back out to, I uh, forget who the team lead is for Mustafa, um, and see if we can get a couple of those 
five looked at by that team one-on-one -on -one, and pair them with whomever um, is appropriate externally and then see who's missing because that's what that's where like Michael Burke came in with the docs he understood the workflow for docs um, some of these are pretty like like so for example I'm looking at the one that's that's ownership of um, the um, authorized key like that's something that we should be able to look at pretty quickly you know and just figure out well okay how is this how could this happen but you know, I don't know. Um, all right, so let's put this on. We've got we're 18 minutes left, and I do want to make sure we have time um, to get to all of the other things without rushing the other folks that are reporting in. So let's put this on the agenda for the next meeting and sort of flesh out ideas um, uh, and sort of be prepared to, to move forward on that at the next meeting. Um, in the meantime, if folks can chip in on those, um, again, these are, these are issues that are tagged um, in the OKD repository. Um, with a good first issue label. All right, um, is there anything else in terms of issues um, that anyone wanted to bring up, Vadim or Christian or anyone else that you want to bring our attention to in the, in the submitted issues? No? Okay, and... What about discussion items? So we had talked before about subgroups, um, and do do we want to start documenting the proposed? We've got these ideas for you know people that would be um, supporter, like dedicated to doing support and whatnot. Should we create a spreadsheet of some kind and start having people um, basically um, submit their names and what it is that they'd specifically like to help with? Does that sound like a good way to start? Um, just as people log in each time, uh, put who you're affiliated with, and then maybe underneath that, um, put what your interests are in contributing in the community. Or is that too much, do you think, for people to, to put into, into the document? Thoughts? Anyone? Wow, okay, I guess no one has any particular opinion about it, so let's do that. At the next meeting, we'll ask folks to put not just who they're affiliated with, but also what part of OKD they might be interested in. So maybe at the top of that document, we can have a list of um, of ways of, like a, some labels that would be, you know, ways to participate, and then people can just sort of list those under their name and ways in which they might be interested in participating. We'll give it a shot, we'll see how it goes. Um, it just seems like a good way to start forming groups and knowing who wants to do what and keep track of that, right? Uh, we already talked about system OMD. Uh, any other discussion items that folks wanna to bring to our attention? Anything else that was submitted that was submitted in the discussion section of the repo um, that you think we should pay attention to in particular? Uh, actually, Jamie, I just have a comment on kind of the the whole uh, subgroup um, plan, which, which I think is absolutely great. I, I do think that that's going to help uh, focus people on a specific task and, and get get that task done uh, more quickly. So in our charter, which we uh, wrote at the very beginning of this uh, working group, we already kind of had the idea of sub uh, working groups. Um, and there is a little section in the charter about that. Um, just to link, I, I linked it here in the chat. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll put it in the doc as well. Um, so yeah, just uh, I just wanted to voice uh, my support for, for the idea in general, and there already is kind of a process, although we haven't fleshed it out, I think, um, of how to create one of these groups or get it started. Um, so I, I definitely appreciate this. Thanks for bringing it up. Absolutely, and so I'll reference back to that and then build on it. Um, and, and sort of weave that into the next meeting, starting with the next meeting. Excellent. And f if folks want to chip in ideas and, and hit me up between now and then to have discussion about it, please do. This is a, a group effort by all means. Um, any other discussion items uh, that folks want to bring to our attention? Anything that was submitted in the discussion section? It doesn't look like there was that many, a handful. No? Okay. 
Um, just a short question. The inside um, feature that shows up uh, in OKD's overview uh, on the web console is this, uh, yeah, does this uh, feature do something or is this uh, just a, a remainder of uh, OCP feature that's turned off um, in OKD? It's an inside separator which, if you have a Red Hat's full secret, would collect data from your cluster periodically and save it in Red Hat's uh, servers. Just a small yeah. subset of data, which is very useful for us to identify problems early. Again, mm -hmm. if you don't have a valid full secret, there is nothing to upload. Rather, you cannot authenticate with the Red Hat server. It, okay. If there has been some data uploaded, it can also give you your recommendation. There's our APGB, which is too small, and uh, things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. It kind of does not apply to OKD, but um, that gives us valuable stats on how people are using OKD. Uh, and that's the only stat we have, meaning we are very tempted to, to use it to make valuable decisions, for instance. There is a bunch of four or five clusters um, and barely any four eight clusters live. That means we need to push for eight uh, advertisement on every single meeting like that so that people would give it a try. Uh, is it representative of what people without the pool secret are using? I don't know. We don't have any data for that. Um, so that's that's basically what we've got. Is okay, that thanks. providing the telemetry you talked about uh, when we do upgrades, or is that something else? It complements telemetry because telemetry is actively sending things rapidly, but Insights makes a snapshot every couple of hours, two or maybe four hours. And telemetry is able to send metrics while Insights is actually making a snapshot of uh, control plane objects, anonymizes them, and sends us here. So we get some information based on metrics. For instance, we can uh, kind of find out your operator state based on metrics, but it's a bit tricky. And if we want some more details, we look into Insights Archives because those are actual snapshots of the project. Okay. And but it doesn't work if you don't have a full secret. Yeah, again, everything flops if you're right. goes into the red hat. With red hat so. Yeah, well, and, regarding and the, the, the insights operator is essentially just the client side of this, obviously. And so, um, then send all that data it collects to, um, to a backend that uh, red hat has. Um, but I'm not sure, I'm not even sure there's a an open source repository for that. Back end. Um, so I'm I'm not sure how how you would use this uh, if not for the for the only use case it has sending the data back to Red Hat um, and obviously that only works if you have the uh, the right pull secret um, the official Red Hat pull secret. I mean, it's, so, um, it's I'm, I'm not sure. It, it I mean it's definitely helpful for our SRE team. I think um, that's a big data source for them. Uh, but yeah, I'm. I, I was, I've always been wondering whether we could kind of uh, make that warning of, or that noti notification that you could connect the or install the insights operator and send more data um, that we kind of don't have that show up on OKD. Um, but on the other hand, you, you could also use a Red Hat pull secret and install it on an OKD cluster um, and then send the data to Red Hat, although probably nobody has done that so far. Yeah, Christian, I think, and Vadim, uh, it, it actually would be helpful, I think, if somewhere it was written down the precise boundary of where you could use the Red Hat pull secret and not. Uh, because uh, I, I've heard many things informally, uh, and certainly, like, you know, anybody that has a developer, Red Hat developer account, which is anybody. Uh, can get one that's valid for 60 days and then uh, it seems, seems um, to continue to be valid after that. 
and there's some maybe mysterious way where you can say that you're self-supporting or not. I, anyway, the uh, like the, the, the past... it, that touches a topic which I don't really know a lot about, which is subscriptions. So all of that is outside of our um, kind of reach. There is a service in in front of all the Red Hat's um, servers, which we maintain internally, called right, yeah. Toolbooth. And what it does is it effectively validates the pull secret and tells us, could this data proceed further or it needs to be thrown off? Right, and so it, that, might, it might be actually a, a Diane issue. Yes. Uh, um, well, there was a nice talk about subscriptions recently on OpenShift to be. And it's slightly different from engineering standpoint. Like, uh, um, right. people are not set in stone. They can, if you're a educational, for instance, facility, you can ask for um, a subscription which enables you the self-supported stuff. Uh, good luck with that. Okay, well, so, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I actually, I actually on, put in a on, request on, a, year, a, a year ago. Hold on. Let's let's. We have seven more minutes, and we do want to get report from the docs folks. So let's, we will investigate, I think, subscriptions and that boundary for poll secrets. We'll see what we can find out. Let's add that to the list of to-dos. Okay, so we have Joseph on the call and I don't see Mike, but I know Joseph and Diane both have things related to docs and outward communications uh, to bring to our attention. So take it away, folks. Yeah. <clears throat> Joseph, you want to go first, and I don't yeah. know what you, what you have, so go for it. I have to admit that I was not um, was not in the docs meeting the last time, so no news from my side. Okay, no, not to worry. I, and I think I pontificated a little bit earlier in the issues section about um, what we're doing around docs and um, and trying to tag things and, and create um, a flow around the docs.okd.io. Um, the other thing, and, and I will create, use Joseph, your blog, um, on the site to create a little documentation around that and awareness for that. Um, the other thing, uh, I think I added it in, in the lower section, I'm just popping between things. Um, we did update, I'm not sure anyone noticed, in Slack, um, the community support text at the very top of the OpenShift dev and OpenShift users to point people to the OKD working group. Um, for community support, so that's um, key. And um, I mentioned in the, the chat on the side, um, on June 25th, um, post Red Hat Summit um, gathering, we're gonna take um, a number of the end user stories that, people, that were pretty popular, um, including Joseph's um, talk on OKD to um, uh, Azure, and um, restream them live on OpenShift TV with sort of a, um, mystery science theater approach. So we may pause them and put in new um, references and things like that and updates. And so if you're if you're around and you want to join us, um, the link is embedded into the notes here. Um, and we'll be streaming. I think it's about four hours long, um, but there were some awesome talks. Interest identification of members um, is the other thing here. Um, not quite sure what you meant by that, Jamie. But um, I'm, the OKD Working Group's doc subgroup uh, meets every other Tuesday uh, at the same time as this one. So if you are interested in joining that group, um, same time, same place, one week later. Sorry, that was connected to what we were talking about earlier with people basically um, denoting their interests somewhere. Ah within the documentation, yeah. Oh, okay, cool, thank you. Um, yeah, so, and that's, that's that, and, and if anyone has a talk that um, they want to give, um, I have a podium via OpenShift Commons and OpenShift TV to do that. Um, um, so I'm looking for other OKD related talks over the summer that um, if someone has one, I would love to um, hint, hint, John Thornton um, to, to, to do an you know, interview style or whatever style you like, uh, get your story out there and get more people um, coming to the OKD working group. I will try, I'm gonna have a very busy summer. <laughs> we thought. I, will try to, I will try to convert some of that work into something I may be able to present. Yeah, no worries. Um, 
Yeah, and uh, there was one other thing that I was trying to think of. Um, yeah, and, and I know the summer is going to be busy for everybody and people are going to start taking vacations. But, um, you know, coming up with a, a date for the Hack the Docs once we're there. I, I can see Jamie's got his hands full. Um, but, uh, yeah, with a good kind of hands full. Yes, I'll put something out with maybe a doodle or something on the working group list to see if we can come up with a date for that. And now I can see from my next meeting a few people popping in because um, this is my channel. And maybe what we'll do is we'll get a separate channel for the OKD working group, uh, Jamie, at some point so that um, they don't overlap. Yes, and that is definitely the OKD's working group's youngest member ever. And um, he has not yet gotten a panda thing. So we are going to have to figure out how to get panda diapers, I think, or panda t-shirts. So, um, this is Leo. Hi. Hello, All right. Any last minute? We have three more minutes left. Any last minute items that folks want to talk about before we sign off? And, and Shri, I just wanted to mention, I saw your post in the working group um, about uh, the messaging around OKD. And well, we'll have a, I'll have a conversation with you about that and see how we can move that whole conversation forward. So look for me in Slack sometime when I'm I'm hanging out and you think I'm, I don't look busy and you don't look busy. You're on European time or are you on the West Coast? Or no, I'm on Eastern. US Eastern time. Okay, I'll look for you and we can, we can move that forward. Sure thing. Mohammed, uh, we can, if you go to the um, Slack channel and post your question there, lots of people can pop on. There's lots of people doing um, home lab setups um, and we do actually have a couple of documents that we can point you to. Um, that are on the website. Joseph, if you have that link handy, maybe throw down the um, the home lab link um, uh, that we have up on the documentation. Um, but yeah, if you go in the Slack channel and ask your question, um, we can definitely help you out. Yeah, I mean, this is just for like value adds for OKD for, you know, eventually we'll put a section of the readme, try to flush that out, make it more clear what you get. Yep. Right now it is a tiny bit unclear, but yeah, I can definitely drop a line in there. I don't remember if I did before, but I'll put another one in now that it's more. It, it also might be uh, fodder for a good um, talk as well. So think about that, like, you know, the way that like yourself and Neil or um, and myself um, talking through why, what, the, what the value proposition is for you guys. I think that might be a, a good Monday open shift I do. Um, upstream stuff. So I could do an open shift OKD, you know, what the value prop is for OKD from the Dados point of view. Um, and have you... Uh, and when, what event would we be doing this in? Or is this a dedicated event or something like... I, I guess I missed a little bit because I'm juggling like three meetings at the moment. That's okay. Sorry. So, okay. So I, I host... Um, uh, I have on OpenShift TV a channel called OpenShift Commons in which on Mondays I do um, upstream talks. And OKD qualifies as an upstream project, so or a sibling stream or whatever. But um, oh, that sounds like fun. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. So yeah, I let's think be that mindful of times because there's there's this next meeting coming up and there's already yeah. people joining. Yeah. So let's and, let's move it to the channel and um, say thanks to Diane and Christian and Vadim and Timothy and everyone else for contributing and Bruce. Say goodbye.